Brad Botus, and uh, this is our weekly Facebook Live Bond and Botus Law Offices broadcast. And uh, we are doing these weekly. We started up, uh, wow, four or five months ago now, once we started staying home and staying safe with COVID, um, trying to just keep our viewers, our clients, um, anybody that's interested, up to date on uh, things that are happening in our communities and um, about what we do in our law offices. We help people with money problems. The Bond and Botus Law Offices are located throughout Alabama. Uh, we're in the Mississippi and we're in the Knoxville area in Tennessee. And what we do is we help people with money problems and we've been doing it for over 30 years now. Um, we, we just, uh, during this season of COVID that we're experiencing in 2020, we know that a lot of people are having and will have financial problems. People have lost jobs, people have lost businesses, and we want you to know what your options are. And we want you to know the truth about the bankruptcy laws and how they work. Uh, we have practiced uh, for over 30 years now, and we've been helping people. We've helped a lot of people just like you. Today, I am fortunate, uh, happy to have my good friend and law partner, Mary Connor Poole, with me. And we're going to talk about life after bankruptcy, about the impact bankruptcy has on your credit and how you can recover and uh, try to address some of the myths. I do want to say at the outset, please be proactive. If it looks like you're going to have a problem finances, if you're behind on your mortgage, get behind on your car, reach out for help. Our offices are all offering absolutely free initial consultations with an experienced attorney like Mary Poole or myself. Uh, we'll do them from the safety of your home or office right now. We'll do, do them by phone or video and uh, we'll just help you walk through your problems. So with that, I want to welcome and introduce my good friend, Mary Poole. Mary, welcome. Thank you, Brad. I'm excited to be here and excited to be talking about this topic. Well, I know it's near and dear to you. And um, it, it, I think that is based primarily upon the fact that before getting into the practice of law, you had a background in the financial community. Um, it, it, with that, why don't you just Mary, if you would share a little bit about your background both before coming to work with Bond and Botus and since you've started practicing with us. Well, sure. Um, my first job when I was 17, believe it or not, was a debt collector. Oh, so no. I worked for a finance company. And back then we would do field calls. I would visit people's houses. So I always tell my clients now I used to be on the dark side. Now I'm not. So I like this side better. And then after that, I went to work for a bank that eventually became a national bank. And uh, there, one of my jobs was loan product manager. So it would be designing products to get people to come get loans through us. And then now my favorite job of all is a bankruptcy attorney with the Bond and Botus family. And I've been here now 12 years. Wow. Um, yep. And so if you notice, I didn't say the years from the prior because we don't need to know about that. <laughs> Mary, I, we both feel 30. That's what's important. Right. right. That's right. Exactly. And you look 30. I won't say Thank anything you. to myself, but <laughs> well, you know, I, I've often said that uh, our practices is what really is different about what we do is um, uh, we make a living helping people file for bankruptcy. But our first objective or my first objective when I sit down with a client is usually to see if we can figure out a way how to avoid bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, right. we both know, shouldn't be your first option. Um, and, and we um, owe it to our clients to address all options um, and, and only uh, guide an individual towards a bankruptcy solution if that's best for them. You know, and on the flip side, most businesses like repeat customers. Well, we don't like repeat customers. Uh, we'll help you if you get into trouble again. It happens to some people, but we're going to talk today about life after bankruptcy, what you can do to uh, um, recover, 
um, from bankruptcy and to keep your finances in order so that you don't uh, have financial issues again in the future. And Mary, I'm so glad to have you to discuss this topic because I know it's response. It's, it's important to you. It is. Um, so a lot of people just really, uh, you know, on a big picture here, Mary, a lot of people just misunderstand what life after bankruptcy is like. Um, I know you and I both get, well, my credit's ruined for 10 years or I can't get any credit for 10 years. Um, just tell us in the big picture what happens after you file bankruptcy. Well, the wonderful thing, you know, once you file bankruptcy, once you finish, you're enabled you to be able to get a fresh start. Um, a lot of people do believe that, oh, if it shows up on credit for a number of years, I'm never going to have everything again. And that's just not true. It's about training yourself to be responsible, um, learning some different techniques that I wish they would teach in high school and in college, but they don't. Um, and if if it was a client who was diligent enough to stay in a chapter 13 for three to five years, when you complete your bankruptcy, you have that money to be able to use. And I always encourage my clients right after they finish a chapter 13, use that money for a little while to build your emergency fund. And I know we'll talk to you about that in a minute. But um, life after bankruptcy can be stress free. Um, the stress, you can see sleepless nights will go away. Um, and it's wonderful to have clients that check back in with me, you know, six months to a year later to say, hey, I'm buying my first house or I just received a car and I got a great interest rate. I love those follow up calls. So um, there is a myth about bankruptcy and there is life after bankruptcy. And I'll just share with our viewers when those comments come in through our website or Facebook, they usually come through me first. And Mary's clients love her. Um, she, she really works um, not just on the bankruptcy, but on life after bankruptcy. So, you know, people have this perception, again, their credit's ruined. But from from your side, when, when you worked on the financial end, um, on the opposite end, what does a credit report look like after bankruptcy? Is the credit just ruined? It is not. Um, you know, there is something which is called a FICA credit score. Um, and back when it first invented, now I'm dating myself, but when it first came out, we as bankers, we would always try to figure out how do they come up with this? But there's really some simple um uh, credit, when you look at your credit history, most of it's based on your payment history, how you make your payments in the future. So as long as after bankruptcy, you're paying your payments on time, that's about 35% of your credit score. Um, your debts that appear on your credit report shows a payment history. It will show if you're late. After bankruptcy, though, for every debt that was wiped away in bankruptcy, it would say zero balance discharged by bankruptcy. I love to tell my clients that mm -hmm. certainly the bankruptcy itself could stay up on the credit for 10 years, but that's just a little line item that's in the beginning. When you rebuild your credit score, then it enables you to be able to have new credit, new payment history to show, hey, I'm paying my bills. I'm doing the right thing. And that helps boost that credit score by about 35 percent. It makes a difference. Um, and then also on your credit report, the amounts that you owe appear. Um, one thing that the FICA score does is it does look at what's the availability of credit to you and what you can borrow from. So you never want to live off credit cards because that can really bring that credit score down. Um, it counts about 30 percent on that. Um, another 10 percent new credit. Those inquiries that is at the end of your credit report. It makes a difference if you apply for a bunch of loans at one time when you finish bankruptcy. You don't want to do that. You want to be smart and diligent about what you apply for. Your length of your credit history makes a difference. So you want to make uh, makes a difference where you've lived, how long you've lived there, where you've worked, how long you've worked there. Um, but your credit report just reflects over the years what you have had in credit. And eventually, this is the good news, those bad credit reports that are or loans that may be showing up or when the debt is discharged in bankruptcy, they fall off. Yeah. And after they fall off, your your credit score can really boost a lot. You know, Mary, I, I always try to tell clients that they come in and they say, well, well bankruptcy is going to ruin my credit. 
And I look them in the eye, and for 95% plus of people that come and see us, their credit's already ruined. And they wouldn't be in our offices coming to see us if they weren't already perhaps behind on bills or at least overloaded with debt. Right. Um, something's happened that's caused them to come in. So it's not like bankruptcy is going to destroy their credit. In fact, I often tell people just look at it from a practical perspective. Um, you know, that they come into my office, they've got credit card bills they haven't paid, they're behind on their mortgage payments, maybe a car repossessed. I say, if you went and tried to borrow money right now, the potential lender is going to look at you and he's going to say, boy, you've got a lot of bills you've got to pay before you pay me. And if I lend you money, there's a good chance you could file bankruptcy next month. But if you go to that lender right after you've received your bankruptcy discharge, as you've already explained, uh, all of those prior balances are zeroed out. They show discharged in bankruptcy. And if you file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, you're not going to be able to file again for another eight years. So, you know, I'm the lender. You're, you're probably going to be a better risk um, right after you get your bankruptcy discharge. I think those are practical terms. Um, I hope a lot of our viewers will understand. It's just, you know, it's the risk to that new lender. You know, another issue we have is people are just embarrassed. And they're concerned if I file bankruptcy, everybody's going to know. Um, how do you respond to that, Mary? Well, I always respond to this way. Sure. Filing bankruptcy is public information, but there's only two ways you're going to get that information. One is if you go to the courthouse, you get that information directly from the courthouse. Two is if the person has a PACER log on to be able to access that um, to know that you filed. Long gone are the days where the bankruptcies are published in the newspapers. You know, it used to be just a filler. They put bankruptcies, weddings, etc. cetera. Um, so I always tell my client to not worry about that, to get the stress off of them from the debt um, and not worry about what other people are saying, because it's, it's better to live right now. You know, that's Dave Ramsey's phrase. It's better to live right now, you know, um, Absolutely. you know, instead of living tomorrow, like you live today like somebody else. So you can live tomorrow like somebody else. And that means you have money. Yeah. Uh, I think the only way people might know is they're going to see a sense of relief and a reduction of stress in your life. Because Correct. You said once we get that protection for people, get their discharge, it's, it's like they're walking out of air. They're just life is really turned around for them. It, 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 the uh, other thing, and I can say this because I'm a much older bankruptcy attorney than you are, and I've been doing this well over 30 years. I tell people, hey, look, I have probably filed bankruptcies for a lot of people you know, and you don't know that they filed bankruptcy. I, I represent people I've gone to church with, people that you know, parents of kids I've gone, my kids have gone to school with, and, and I'm sure you probably have some of the same instances. There's just, it's not like you have a mark on your forehead or anything. Um, unless somebody really digs, they're not going to know about your bankruptcy. Um, it, it's a confidential transaction that we handle for you as your attorney. Um, other big concern, people say, well, I'm going to lose everything. Uh, I'm going to lose everything if I file bankruptcy. Is that the case, Mary? It is not. Um, that's one of our jobs as your bankruptcy attorney is to make sure you're not going to lose the property that you want to keep. Um, in Alabama, you know, when it comes to your home, we're able to protect your homestead exemption, 15500 And if you're married, then that goes up to 31000 that we can protect on a home. Um, with your personal property, what you own in your household, each individual gets to protect $7,750. And when you go by yard sale values or the Kelly Blue Book value of a car, your average Alabamian is not going to exceed that amount at all. Um, and if it does exceed it, there's ways to protect it, whether it be doing a chapter 13 or potentially um, negotiating with a chapter seven trustee, or maybe it's just not enough for the chapter seven trustee to fool with to take. So that's why it's always good that I think we offer a free consultation just to discuss that and get rid of that fear. Um, because you're right, a lot of people do fear that. Yeah. 
absolutely essential to have an experienced attorney guide you through this process. Um, yes, it, it is possible to lose property, but if, if one of us has um, helped you prepare, you're going to know in advance before you lose anything. And if you don't want to lose something, uh, we can help you make sure that doesn't happen. Mary, I've been doing this and I'm going to stop talking about how long I've been doing it because it makes me feel old, but a long time. And I could count on one hand the amount of times um, that my clients lost property that we didn't think they were going to lose going in. It just doesn't happen. Um, why you need the advice and counsel of an experienced bankruptcy attorney um, before you do this. I do want to just take a short break here to remind our viewers this is the Bond and Bodice Facebook Live. We do this every Wednesday at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. And we uh, are just trying to help people through a difficult time right now. Um, COVID's been tough on a lot of people. A lot of people have lost jobs. Businesses have shut down. If you're having money problems, be proactive. Every one of our offices, uh, we're offering absolutely free initial consultations. We'll walk through your situation with you, uh, no charge. We'll do it from the safety of your own home or office by phone or video. Um, and we'll just answer your questions and try to give you a game plan, just like Mary and I are talking today. So reach out to our website, um, call the phone number that's on your screen, um, however you're comfortable with. And one of our um, intake specialists will walk through your situation with you and make sure that you have an appointment set up with one of our experienced attorneys. Last week, um, our Facebook Live episode, if you didn't have a chance to watch it, we had Ann Wright Regal, who is the executive director with the Firehouse Ministries here in Birmingham, serving our homeless community. Fascinating episode. Um, all of us um, are seeing um, the plight of the homeless community um, in the areas that we live. Um, Ann gave some great advice. That episode, today's episode, all of our episodes, are available um, on our Facebook pages. Um, so you can always tune in later. And if you know somebody that you think would benefit from, uh, from what Mary is discussing today, um, please let them know they can come back and watch this episode later and share it with them. So again, to get back to what we're doing today, um, we are talking with my good friend and law partner, Mary Connor Poole. Mary practices out of our offices in Montgomery, Alabama, of like Alabama and Mobile, Alabama. Um, she has a background in banking before she got into the practice of law. And even uh, as she stated, um, did some work on the dark side as a collector yes. <laughs> years ago. Um, I want to get back to uh, the rebuilding credit and life after bankruptcy. Mary, um, today, my clients have a lot of opportunities post bankruptcy to incur new debt. Didn't used to be the case, but today there are pre approved credit cards. There are uh, car lenders that offer to finance cars. What's the best way? What are the best type of debts to work with early on as you're rebuilding your credit? Well, I always give um, the advice to my clients. There's two types of debts that I tell them to get. One is a credit card if they can get one that's not secured. But if they have to get secured credit card, that's fine. That just means that they deposit money in a bank and they're working with their own money on a secured credit card. The benefits of a credit card is that you can pay it off every single month. Right you need before to pay it off every month. Yes, you do. And right before the due date, so that every month you're getting credit that you have paid that off. And the credit, it's still showing available to you on your credit report. If you remember in the beginning, I was talking about your payment history counts 35%, but that amount you owe counts 30%. So if you're maxing out your credit cards and keeping them maxed out, you're kind of only getting a net 5% if you're paying that every single month. So we want both. We want to get that good 65% you know, increase or improvement on our credit score. So um, that's one way that I recommend, but only if you can pay it off. If you're horrible at credit cards and you're not diligent about paying it off every month, don't get one. It's not worth it. 
The second option I usually tell people is to get a small installment loan. You can do that sometimes through your bank, but the benefit of that is every single month it's going to reflect that you're paying that payment on time. And when it does and you eventually pay it off, it's a, it helps improve that credit score over time and at the end as well. I don't usually encourage them to rush out and get brand new cars and brand new houses. I know how tempting it is, but the only reason I don't encourage that is start small. Learn your new way of living. And that can be, we'll talk about it, I'm sure in a minute, developing a budget, living within a budget. Once you have that down pat, then I'm like, Go to town, get a car, get a house if you can afford it, if it's something that you need. But I never want to buy a brand new car. That's never my recommendation to my clients. <laughs> Cars depreciate so quickly. Um, as soon as you drive the car off yes. the showroom floor, as we know, it drops in value significantly. So you're yes. upside down on your loan. You owe more than, than what the car is worth. Yeah. Uh, you know, something I tell people not to um, forget, um, people are concerned about rebuilding with new debt. Now, a lot of times our clients flow through bankruptcy with existing debt. They may have a mortgage payment. Um, they, they decided to keep their house and reaffirm right. agreed to paying on their mortgage or on a car loan. Make those payments timely going forward. Um, your existing uh, obligations, it's important to keep current following your bankruptcy. Um, and, and you know, you talked about getting a credit card after bankruptcy. Folks, I hate to tell you this. Well, maybe maybe you like to hear this, but it's not hard to get a credit card after bankruptcy. It used to be. Uh, they may be small balance credit cards. It may be a $500 balance. It may not be the best interest rate. But who cares about the interest rate if you're paying it off on time every month? Right. Uh, don't pay any more interest, especially to credit card companies. Very buying a home after bankruptcy. Um, can I buy a home after I file bankruptcy? And if so, how long does it normally take? Yes, once you get your discharge, you certainly can buy a home, but the recommendation is usually wait about three years. You're not going to get the greatest interest rate and you may not qualify initially right after bankruptcy. Remember, it's about your credit score. It also is about your debt to income ratio. So when you come out of bankruptcy, your debt to income ratio certainly should be better, but you want to have a down payment. So there, the discharge certainly is a start, but I always recommend have a good down payment. Make sure you understand your credit terms um, and that you have a budget in place and your use. I, I stress this enough is having that budget in place and knowing that you can afford to pay your bills going forward before you take on a full mortgage. Most of my clients, though, when they buy a house, it's cheaper than when they're renting. Not a little bit, but a lot. So it really can free up a lot of money. The only discouragement I have for most of my clients is watch out for bond for titles. As you know, in Alabama, our state allows a bond for title. And that's essentially where an owner is going to agree to finance that real estate over time for you. The problem with that is a lot of the bond for titles have a clause within them that states that if you're behind on that mortgage, it can revert back to a lease. So you may have placed a down payment. You've been paying this payment, albeit a little bit late. Maybe you're running behind and you're not really buying a house anymore, it maybe now has converted to a lease. So I always discourage my clients that are post-discharge, stay away from those. Yeah, Mary, you just made an excellent point. You know, don't be in a rush. Um, people ask me, they say, well, how soon will I be able to buy a house? I said, this is, you know, a lot of times people get into money problems by trying to do things quickly. Um, think through what you're doing. Make sure you can make a down payment to make sure it's a debt you can handle that it fits within your household budget, which is one of your favorite terms. Talk about maintaining a household budget and how that works. Tell us what you advise people there, Mary. Well, there is actually a great website, budget.com. I, I always encourage my clients, get, and I, I am not in any way um, get paid for this promotion or whatever, but it does enable you to learn how to develop a household budget. 
Another recommendation, I have done this myself years ago, is I did Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. And part of the reason why I did that is to learn the budgeting process and how he does it weekly. Um, it was amazing to me. It's easy to do a budget for a month because you take the income that's coming in for the month, you subtract out your bills, what's there. You subtract out those that may fluctuate a little bit, such as food and gas for your car. And when everything's said at the end, hopefully that's the money going to your emergency fund, but it's finding that money to place it into your emergency fund. But with the budgeting that Dave Ramsey does, he does it weekly. And I had never thought of that before. And I thought, well, how smart is that? And if you get paid biweekly, maybe you do it biweekly. But basically, you do it based on your paycheck. This paycheck goes to this. And when I changed my budget from monthly to biweekly or semi-monthly, the way that I was paid, there was a huge difference in the amount of money that I was saving because I didn't realize what I was frivolously spending. And if my husband's watching, I'm sure he's thinking of the clothes that I spent the money on. <laughs> so, I was not smart back then. <laughs> Glad you would not complain, I'm sure. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. Budgeting, as you said earlier, is something that should be taught in high school. Our kids should learn early on how to maintain a budget. But you and I see it every day. People come in to see us, and one of the first things we have to do um, if they're going through a bankruptcy is compile their income and their expenses. Um, and people have no idea how much they spend on gasoline every month, how much they spend on food every month, um, things that they should be able to track. And because they don't budget, they don't have what you just addressed. They don't have that emergency fund. So what, what's the negative consequence? If you don't have an emergency fund, Mary, what can happen? Well, the problem with not having an emergency fund is you're going to rely on resources that are not very good for you. You're going to try to get the title loans, the payday loans, et cetera. So if your water heater goes out and you are a homeowner, Who's going to pay for that? Are you going to be able to finance it? If you can't qualify for financing, how are you going to get that water heater? A house can't have, not, you know, you got to have water. So the emergency fund enables you to be able to fall back on those in those situations. So um, your car breaks down, things like that. You've got the money to fall back on. In this COVID-19 pandemic, you know, they encourage you to have at least a half a year emergency fund so that, God forbid, if something were to happen, you didn't have a job or something like that, there's no stress because you will get that job again. You will go back to work, but you have your emergency fund to fall back on. Um, and unfortunately, there were a lot of people more impacted because they just didn't have the capability or didn't have that in their nest egg, in their savings account to be able to fall on. So it's so important to have that emergency fund. My dad taught me when I was younger. The one thing he taught me as a teen, pay yourself first. And what that means, it's not the house payment, it's not the car payment. It's put money into that emergency fund so you have it to fall back on. Just said something important, pay yourself first. Uh, we know a lot of the people that um, get into financial problems are there because they've tried to help others. Um, perhaps a family member, perhaps a friend, um, What's your advice there, Mary, concerning whether it be co-signing on a loan or lending money to a family member? What can what can happen there? Well, this one's near and dear to my heart. I have I have fallen in this trap before in my past. Um, just because you want to be there for your family, um, you want to make sure they don't lose cars or houses or whatever. But the important thing is to make sure that you're okay first. And, and that's not being selfish, but that's taking care of your family first. If you have the ability afterwards, then definitely help if that's something that's near and dear to your heart. But I discourage you helping any family members, especially while in bankruptcy. It's, it's really important to get your life back on track. Remember, live today like no, no one else so that tomorrow you can live like someone else and no one else too. And, and if you're not financially healthy, you're not going to be able to be there for family members in the future. Um, 
you've got to take care of yourself so that you're there to help others if they need it. Mary, I want to address some of the questions we're starting to get coming in. Um, I've got some that have come in from our moderator here, but um, first question, and we know this is something a lot of people ask. Uh, you, you touched upon it earlier, but how soon after I file can I get a car? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, if you file chapter seven, I have some clients that do it immediately because they want to get rid of their existing car. Um, there's nothing with regards to chapter seven stopping you really from doing that. With chapter 13, you can't incur any debt, of course, without the court's permission. But once you receive your discharge, you're on your own with your credit. So you want to be responsible and making sure you're making that those right decisions for you. So uh, there's no time limit. The one important thing I do want to stress, though, is a lot of people don't understand terms of a loan. They don't know what an annual percentage rate is. And that's essentially what you're going to pay a year to that creditor in order to borrow that money. So if you're paying a 24% interest rate on $1,000, then $240 a year, essentially, if you don't pay that down, you could be paying to that creditor. So it's understanding the terms, how long you're financing that car. Um, you know, those are really important. So think about that when you go out to buy a car after you get your discharge. Are you doing the right thing for you and your family? And if you need the car, make sure you get the best terms. And you don't need a new car. There's nothing wrong with going out and buying a car that's two, three years old, that's been loved by somebody else for a little while. Um, if you buy a new car, it's going to be used after a short period of time anyway. You can save a lot of money by making a wise decision. Uh, and I tell my clients, uh, and I'm sure you tell people the same thing, you know, you've hired me for a bankruptcy, but I'm your attorney, I'm your counselor. If you have questions going forward about, you know, terms of a new car loan, um, a house loan, give me a call. Um, I'd be glad to talk to you about it, be glad to help you with it. I know you do this, Mary, and, and it's just, uh, it, we are your attorney. It, That's correct. We're, we're not just here to get a quick bankruptcy filed. We're here to help you get to a better place um, and maintain a good life. Um, all right. We talked about this earlier. Um, what's going to happen? Uh, will they lose their home? Are they going to get evicted if they file bankruptcy? No, um, with evictions, um, leases, essentially, uh, whether it be a home or apartment that you're leasing, um, the arrears that you're behind, if you're doing a chapter 13, we can usually pay that back here within the first six months of the bankruptcy. So it enables you to get back on track and continue to pay that landlord. The only dilemma and problem that we have normally, if you're doing a chapter 13, is whether you're in a month to month lease or if you're in a true term lease, that means for a year, two years, et cetera. If you're in a month to month lease, then essentially the landlord could make a decision, you know, within a month, hey, I don't want you there anymore. I'd like to seek relief so I can be able to evict you. Um, but it buys you time if you do a chapter 13. There's so many scenarios when you're renting a house or apartment um, that can enable you to have time. And that's usually what people are looking for when they're facing an eviction is I can't get out tomorrow. I'd love to stay there. Um, and in most cases, the landlord, they just want the money. How can you pay me? So if you're willing to do it over six months and they can get it, they're willing to do that sometimes. Yeah, I, I want to, you just, you, you explained something that is very simple in general terms, but I'm sure for some lay people, the terms month to month lease, term yes. lease, chapter 13, those can be confusing terms, yes. which again is why you need an experienced attorney, somebody that has done this before, that's been through this process, that knows how the bankruptcy courts work, how the process works. At the Bond and Modus Law Offices, folks, we have experienced attorneys. Um, I've been doing this for over 30 years. Uh, combined, we have hundreds of years of experience in the bankruptcy courts in Alabama and in Mississippi and in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and, and Mary and I have both been to national conferences. We know um, how bankruptcies work uh, really all over the place. Um, uh, so it's important to have a qualified attorney to help you. 
comma, if you're going to go through the bankruptcy process. And I've got to touch upon this quickly. I want to get to some more questions we have from viewers. But so many people um, call us and they say, how much will it cost to file bankruptcy? And, and I can tell people that you, you just want to get through this and you want to pay as little as possible. But bankruptcy is something that's going to impact you in both a positive way and in a negative way. It's going to have repercussions. If you're going to do something like this, you want to do it right. Um, we're not the cheapest bankruptcy attorneys. We're not the most expensive. But we do the job right, and we're there afterwards if you need help. Um, so if this is something you feel like you need to go through, please don't look at price alone. Um, I can tell you this. It costs a lot less to file a bankruptcy right in the first place than it does to fix one that was filed wrong. Um, we offer free consultations, folks. Phone numbers on your screen. Our website um, has a form you can fill out to request a consultation. Absolutely free from the safety of your home or office by video or phone. We want to help you. Reach out for help. All right, so Mary, next question here is, is it possible to have a 700 plus credit score ever again after bankruptcy? It is, and I have a client to prove it. I just got a call about uh, four months ago or so, and a client was like, Miss Poole, my, my credit score is 740, and it can be done. It's all about mastering that FICA score, staying on top of your credit report through annualcreditreport.com. You're entitled to a free credit report once a year. I even pull mine just to make sure something weird has not popped up because some people can steal identity that's happened to a lot of my clients. And it's just so horrible when that happens because it takes so long to get out of. But it's just knowing these are the debts that I'm paying on time every single month. This is the amount of loans or credit that I have available on my credit score. I've stayed in my house for a long period of time. I've maintained my job for a long period of time. And all of those things will help that credit score. Um, so, yes, you can certainly see above 700. And in fact, bankruptcy can help it. It gives it a fresh start, wipes away all that horrible debt that's kind of bringing that credit score down and enables you to be able to rebuild it. Now, it's, um, a, a, your credit report is not just important for borrowing money either. It can affect the cost of insurance. It can affect yeah. so many things you do in your life. So you're right. You do want to monitor that credit report, make sure it's accurate. And uh, folks, if there's something that's not accurate on your credit report, we have plenty of information on our website to help you get that corrected. Or if you can't do it on your own and you need assistance, please reach out to us. We'll be glad to help you with those type of issues also. Correct. Credit scores, credit report, important. I always find it interesting. Uh, this this question in particular was, will I be able to get a 700 score? But I can tell you that most of our clients see a jump in their credit score within a very short period of time following their bankruptcy. Very true. So, all right. Um, will my employer know I filed for bankruptcy? Well, there are sometimes on applications where the employer will ask if you have had a bankruptcy. I mean, you certainly want to uh, you know, answer that honestly. Um, but again, the employer will only know on if they do background checks um, that pull the bankruptcy information. Most of the time, the background check is only pulling to see if you have criminal background. It doesn't care if you have a bankruptcy. The, the employer doesn't. But again, the only way to access that is go to the court, get that information, or have PACER access, or to pull some type of background check. So I always tell my clients, because I have clients, some, how should I answer that question? Honestly, you want the job, you want to be honest. Mary, this next question, um, I feel so strongly about, I'm going to answer this one. It's, do you have clients who have been more successful after bankruptcy than before? Absolutely. Yes. And, and the main reason is they have realized that there was a problem. We sit down, we work through your budget with you. We help you learn how to make sure um, 
that you only spend as much as you should on particular budget items and that you have money to go into that emergency fund when the bankruptcy is over. So I, I could give you dozens and dozens of stories about people that have been through the bankruptcy process and have said, boy, I am so glad I took that step. The fresh start was so helpful to me and I've learned so much. You agree with that, Mary? Completely, 100% agree. I mean, and it really brings joy, I know, to my heart. I'm sure you, um, when a client receives their discharge and they've changed their life and they're being, they're able to provide for their families responsibly um, and then gives me a call and just says, thank you. Thank you so much because it really did make a difference. Mary, uh, what other important points about your budget? Um, uh, your credit score life after bankruptcy. I want to give you a chance to, because I know you feel passionate about this, just to address this in a big picture. What what other important points would you like to make about the process? Well, the main, uh, one of the other points I wanted to bring up when we were talking about budget is if you are married, to make sure that you have family meetings. It's so important that you both stay on top of it, especially if someone such as myself who's paying the bills for the household, you know, you want your spouse to know, oh, we're a little short that week or I could have not spent there. Um, it's so important to have a family meeting uh, with your spouse, at least to discuss this is where we need to be. But as your kids get older, I have a six year old. It's really important with your children to teach them good habits now. If you pay a monthly or weekly allowance, the important thing there is to teach your children not to go frivolously spending it in on toys, as my daughter, I'm sure, would love to do every single time, but to make sure that she is putting back and they are putting back a little bit for themselves, saving for something. I know, you know, one thing she wants is a TV. She asks for a TV all the time. Yesterday it was a computer. But those are things that I think she needs to figure out, ooh, that costs a lot of money. That's going to take me cleaning my room 52 days a week, you know, a year. Um, so we've got to make sure that we teach our children young. And just because you filed bankruptcy does not mean that that is something that you really need to have to hide from your children. I, I'm fortunate enough not to call any of my family members out, but we had a rough time. I was an army brat when I was younger and my parents divorced and my mom did everything she could to provide for us, but the money just didn't go as far. So it's very important. And, and I learned lessons through her hard lessons that she had to learn. And now she sometimes, you know, says, oh, I wish I, I could have, but she taught me the most valuable lesson. And that is, it is important to have a budget. It is important, you know, to to make those payments. And you know what? If it's something I can't afford, it's just not worth it now. I I, I remember my, my mom, uh, my parents were depression babies. Um, they grew up during the depression when money was was very tough. And as a result of that, um, they learned how to budget. And mom, um, God bless her, was and is. If you're listening, mom, a penny pincher, but what great lesson she taught. Um, you know, you can eat leftovers for dinner. Um, you can make a sandwich and carry it to the office with you rather than going out for lunch. Um, make sure you monitor uh, your savings, that you're building up money. I want to touch upon it. And this is this is just great, Mary, because you talked about working with your spouse on your budget. That can be such a beautiful thing. And we see it so often post bankruptcy because pre bankruptcy, a lot of times money problems create stress and, and marital problems. We see couples come in all the time, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers can relate. You know, there's not enough money to pay the bills, and it, it creates stress on your marriage. It, it, it hampers your ability to be a, a good spouse be a good parent, uh, to be a good employee. You know, you talked about uh, a question earlier about will my employer know? You know, most employers are glad that you've sought bankruptcy protection because you're not the ball of stress you were before you sought bankruptcy protection. But financial issues can be a great 
way to build a successful marriage, to, to address these issues head on together. Um, don't let the stress and anxiety that comes from financial problems impact your marriage negatively or impact your family negatively. Um, if you're out there, if you're dealing with this stress, if it's already impacting your relationship with your spouse, or your ability to be a good parent, reach out for help. Get over the pride thing, people. Just reach out for help. Just calling one of our offices doesn't mean you're going to file bankruptcy. It means you're addressing the situation and finding out what your options are. It's free, folks. We'll talk to you. Uh, we'll answer your questions and we'll try to get you on the right course. Uh, I know, you know, again, being an old attorney, this didn't happen 30 years ago, but in, in recent years, I get a lot of referrals from the pastor at my church that does marital counseling. Right. Um, you know, you wouldn't think a pastor um, would think about a bankruptcy attorney, but um, folks come in and they're bickering with one another and they come in and we're able to help them address their financial problems and work together. So Meredith, or Mary, that was just, sorry folks, Meredith's my dog. <laughs> Mary, uh, that's just such a great point to make. Um, so next question is where where can i go to speak to somebody about my situation and learn my option all right folks they've been across banners have been across the bottom of our screen since we started here our phone number and our website please please reach out for help if you need it um, we'll be glad to talk to you if you're in montgomery or opelika or mobile mary will be glad to talk to you and help you address the situation um Mary, uh, Dave Ramsey, we talked about him earlier. I know you think a lot of Dave. Um, uh, I've had the opportunity to meet him. I've been to his house. He's, he's, he's a great guy. Um, we don't always see eye to eye on whether or not bankruptcy relief is appropriate. That's the only area I can Right. <laughs> um, how can people, and, and I, I'm asking you this on short notice, um, what do you recommend as far as Dave Ramsey? I know he gives talks at a lot of churches. Um, how can people I, learn more about that? Definitely. Um, if you go to DaveRamsey.com, he has a link on there for classes. And anywhere where you live, you can pull it up. You can also order the package online. Um, the amazing thing, it comes with a booklet along with these little envelopes. He's real big and paying cash for everything. And I can see the importance of that, You know, especially now that debit cards are so easy to swipe. Um, credit cards are easy as well, um, but it's just making sure that you stay on top of your money. And that's the reason why he's he's really keen on making sure that you go with the grocery store with cash. Um, and you don't realize how much you spend on food until you start tracking it. I remember the first budget um, that Greg and I, Greg's my husband, sat down after the Dave Ramsey. We, we did our budget together and we've tallied up the month before what we spent on food. This is before we had the budget. Mm -hmm. We spent $1,200. It was just the two of us. We were like, mm -hmm. where'd the food go? Well, we were eating out every single night. You know, sadly, I do not cook, but you know, for Harper, but um, it can add up. And most of the times when my client's budget doesn't add up. So if I take their income minus their expenses, it shows they have 2000 left over. I'm like, where's the money? It's got to be going somewhere. And they're like, Miss Boy, I have no clue, but I don't have money. But I say, OK, well, bring me your bank statement. And when I go through that bank statement, I kid you not, it's always going to be in the food column. It's right. there. And you just don't realize you're not spending 400. You're spending 1200 um, because those little visits to McDonald's for that six year old add up. Um, and if you eat out every day, if you work downtown and you're not taking your lunch, those those little visits can add up as well. So. Um, Anyway, the, the budget is, is keen with Dave Ramsey. You can do it at most churches, just like you said, Brad. They offer the program. That's where I did my program. They usually offer it at least once a quarter. I know my church does, uh, which is First Baptist uh, in Montgomery. And um, the program is usually run by people such as ourselves, you know, that have been through and create budgets. It's not Dave Ramsey or somebody telling you this is how you should live, but it's teaching you a way to work your own budget. Um, that's one thing that I loved about the program. It wasn't someone telling me I had to do something. It was teaching me 
how to do it. And, and encouraging it. Um, That's and, correct. And, 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 and once you start doing it, it just feels so good because you know you yes. have money in the bank and, and not a lot of debt. A question here from a Donna that's not directly on point, but I want to answer it. And Donna, thank you for answering. She says, I'm completing my chapter 13 in four months. My auto was included in the 13. How can I get my car title when I'm discharged? I'll let you answer that one, Mary. Well, that's usually the number one question people want to know. They want it right away. Um, and what happens is usually when the creditor receives notice of your discharge, we can expect that car title in about 30, 30 days or so. They will usually send it to your bankruptcy attorney just because you were represented by an attorney and your attorney will call you to pick it up. Um, if it's any later, our office, this is part of what Brad was saying earlier. We just don't stop after the discharge, but we go a little further and make sure that we get those titles um, if our clients are calling saying they haven't received them. So it's um, it's almost automatic if the creditor is doing the right thing. Otherwise, we prompt them a little bit to say, hey, get us that title and get, us that, get it now. Yeah, and, and Donna, if you're one of our clients, feel free to reach out to our office directly or your own attorney if, if you're with another firm should be able to help you with this. I will throw in this, you know, there have been instances where a creditor has been slow in releasing the title or refuse to release the title. We'll sue them for you if we need to. Yep. You are entitled to that title back when you get your discharge. And if they don't produce it in a timely manner, um, we'll ask the court to make them do so and, and pay you for um, any inconveniences you've had as a result of, of not having your title on a timely basis. So, Mary, I want to thank you. Um, we're getting close to an hour and I don't like to keep these um, too much longer or, or take you away from, I know you've got a lot to do today, but this is such an important issue. And I, I know looking at you and listening to you, you helped me underscore to viewers, to our clients. Um, we care about you as a person. Um, we don't want to just Except a set small amount of money in your bankruptcy filed, we want to help your life get better. And getting your life better doesn't mean just getting a quick bankruptcy discharge. Getting your life better means learning how to budget, means learning how to communicate with your spouse about budget items, means being realistic. Um, so many of the things Mary addressed today are important to uh, getting the full benefits of your bankruptcy discharge. Um, Mary, I, I know for you, you know, it, it, this isn't just a job. I love sitting down with people and helping them get to a better place financially. Um, it, it's really a, almost a type of ministry because people just feel so much better when they're able to get their finances in check and have a plan moving forward. Right. So folks, I just want to underscore there is help available. It may feel hopeless right now. There's so many bad things that have happened this year, but the Bond and Bodice Law Offices have been helping people with financial problems for over 30 years. Um, we know times are tough right now, and we are offering absolutely free initial consultations with an experienced bankruptcy attorney. As I said earlier, and my wife, you know, she, she says, you got to stop telling people this because you make a living filing bankruptcies. But no, you know, if we can keep you out of bankruptcy, that's what we're going to do. And when we get you, if you make the decision to file bankruptcy and we get you through the process, we have good people like Mary Connor Poole that are going to help you get your life back in order. Um, it's a passion for Mary to help people get on a budget and rebuild their credit. All of our attorneys feel the same way. So be proactive, reach out for help. Don't be ashamed. Uh, don't let pride get in the way. There are a lot of people having financial problems right now. Um, and we want to help you if we can. Mary, thanks so much for being with us today. Is there anything you want to say in closing? No, I was just going to bring up real quick on um, credit repair companies. You know, a lot of people uh, choose oh, not yeah. to come to us. They would rather try to repair their credit. And I usually just want to warn people, you know, if someone's asking for money up front or making promises that seem too good to be true, they probably are. Remember, our consultations are free.
So it doesn't hurt by just having a conversation with one of our attorneys to see whether or not bankruptcy is the right choice for you or to get the advice of what to do if bankruptcy is not the right choice for you. We're bankruptcy attorneys and yes, we make money if you file, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you what's right for you. And that's that's the most important thing I think at Bond and Bettis. And if you talk to a credit repair company, you know, give us a call also. Um, ask us about some of the things you were yeah. told. Um, you know, those credit repair companies are somewhere off in the internet or at the other end of a toll-free number. Mary Poole, uh, Brad Botus, all of our attorneys are in uh, uh, brick and mortar buildings. Um, we've been here for a long time. Um, we report uh, to a federal judge when we take action on your behalf and to a federal bankruptcy trustee. And we have licenses issued by the State Bar Association. And I assure you, if we do something improper, we should and will hear from the Bar Association. Uh, so we're transparent. We want to help you. On behalf of Mary Poole, on behalf of myself, on behalf of all of us at Bond and Bodus, uh, God bless you. Get your finances in order. And if we can help you, please just reach out to us. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.